Shepherd is a unique breed in that it has four varieties of the one breed. So we show as if we are four separate breeds. Uh, we have the Belgian Shepherd Gronendale, the Belgian Shepherd Lacanoir, the Belgian Shepherd Malinois, and the Belgian Shepherd Tavurin. So we go into the ring as four separate breeds, but we're actually one breed with four varieties. So we have the ability to end a variety breed, and I believe that's a really important factor in maintaining our breed, because in America, they are four separate breeds and are unable to end a variety breed. Therefore, if a Tavurin puppy comes from two Gronendale parents, it has to be registered as a, as a Gronendale, and it has to be shown as a mismarked puppy or it is eliminated from their gene pool. Um, it's a big problem. It's a, big, a problem they've been discussing for years and they may be heading towards an outcome. And some of us are fortunate enough this year to be going to their very first joint national specialty show. And that's a really big thing. So if you love the breed, you want to see everybody in every country doing it the right way. So when you're judging them, you have to remember that this is one breed. So coat colour, coat length, um, coat quality shouldn't come into it. They should all be exactly the same. There shouldn't be people, when we hear it, oh, but that's a Lacamoire or a Malinois, so they're different. No, they're not. That's a Malinois with a long coat. That's a Tavurin with a short coat. That's a Tavurin with a black coat, technically, if you know what I'm saying. Like, they're all the one breed. It's the coat that differentiates the varieties. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, we'll go into handling them afterwards, but we'll go into the PowerPoint now. I'm hoping that I've covered everything. I've added a few things to our normal PowerPoint presentation. Um, I've passed around that gold box, we'll talk about that afterwards, but I'm hoping that once you finish with the PowerPoint you'll understand what that is all about, okay? Yes. So the Belgian Shepherd Dog is an elegant, robust and square dog. He is alert, effervescent and guarding. He's moderate which means not fine or heavy, with no exaggeration. It's really important to remember that everything about our breed is moderate. There should be no exaggeration, no exaggerated angles, no exaggerated heads, no exaggerated coats. Everything should be moderate. So we don't want drape coats, we don't want fine pointy heads, we don't want steep angulations. We want a moderate dog that is square, uh, effervescence is also very important. A Belgian Shepherd should not be a statue. Some of us can train them really well, so they'll go into the ring and stand well, but if you have a dog that's full of exuberance when you're trying to judge it, that's fine. That's what we want. We want a dog with a bit of personality. So here's a male, Tavurin. So a Belgian Shepherd is a sheep dog, fast moving in the mud, so his long legs keep his body out of the mud and his coat resists the weather. So if you've lived with a Belgian, you know if they get mud on their coat, it sticks for a while and then it flicks off, you can brush it out easily. They're also a guardian dog, so they're bred to guard and herd sheep. They can be aloof of strangers, alert at all times, and some may even call them hyperactive. They're reliable with children and fun-loving, so they're not a doormat by any stretch of the imagination, but they should also be good guardians, but they can be aloof. We used to have wary in our standard. They've taken that out. That's probably a good thing because we don't want timid dogs, but you do have to accept that they're a breed that is aloof. So... Here's a nice square Belgian Tavurin, and we've just put the box over the top to show you. They're a medio-lineal dog, harmoniously proportioned. Everything matches everything. Good length of leg, they're square. Intelligent, alert, vigilant and proud. Aloof, yes, timid. Aloof, yes, timid, never. We've gone elegant again. So here's a picture of a square Belgian Shepherd Tavurin and a German Shepherd. And you can see I've put the red square over the purple square to
to show the difference. They're short in loin and that gives them the ability to turn quickly. So if they're chasing sheep in slush, they're able to move around really fast. This breed actually likes to run in circles. So there's a lovely and typical Belgian Shepherd head, nice almond shaped eyes, good mask, nice shaped ears, good size. There's no snipiness about that dog. You can see that that's a robust dog. It's, not, it's got a good under jaw, you can sort of just see. So there's no exaggerated elegance about it. The muzzle and the skull are roughly equal in length and they taper down to the nose and are well chiselled be, be, below the eye. Now we'll talk about this shortly, but when they refer to chiselling, they're referring to the part where the skull, the top skull meets the muzzle, which is sort of in under here. You don't want that too full. The cheeks are dry and flat, so you don't want big puffy cheeks. Everything should be nice and like a butter knife has been taken up the sides of the head. Slightly almond shaped, eyes obliquely set and preferably dark. Now, our breed standards has evolved. We're now looking for really dark eyes, but just remember when you're judging them that medium brown eyes used to be what was accepted and don't penalise a dog simply because it doesn't have dark eyes, like chocolate dark. At the same time, you don't want light eyes. If it ruins the expression, then that is really quite a serious fault because it is the expression on their head that is very important. Ears rather small, set high, and distinctly triangular in appearance. So with the coat there, they look like equilateral triangular ears. Side view of the head, you want parallel planes. So, you know, it doesn't mean that the skull has to be completely flat, but it has to appear flat and it has to appear that if you drew a line as in that illustration, they would run parallel to each other. The little star at the corner of the mouth, the Belgian Shepherd has a wide split mouth. So the split goes up quite high into its cheek. The skull is of medium, medium width and in proportion with the head. So once again we go back to that moderate angulations, moderate widths, everything bal is balanced and in proportion. A moderate stop, it's very important that we keep our stops, we are starting to lose them a bit. So that's something to watch for but it shouldn't be the only point that you use. So. Um, if you've got two dogs that are really nice and one's got more of a stop than the other one, then you probably should lean that way because that's what we should have. We shouldn't have the ski slope heads. Strong teeth, pincerbite accepted and preferred by the shepherd. This is really important. We've had Belgian shepherds nil awarded because of pincerbite. A pincerbite is actually the preferred bite for a shepherd. Um, our preference by the standard is a scissor bite, but pincer bite is accepted. But um, regarding teeth, now this is, this is in for the head and skull, we'll go on to the teeth later. So this, this is often pe what people ask, what is the zygomatic arch? It's, it's reference to in our breed standard and it shouldn't be prominent. So the zygomatic arch is this part here that goes up into the cheekbone. So you want that to be not prominent, you don't want it poking out. Um, and in reference to chiselling, and we'll come to that later, this is the area that they refer to when it, like, pretty much the, the side cheek area. Okay, correct dentition. This is really interesting, I rang Catherine about this because they referred to an M3. So once upon a time when we had the English standard, Counting teeth was never an issue. And then we had a show after we got the FCI standard where the judge was counting teeth and people were madly running around going, oh my God, how many teeth are my dogs supposed to have? They didn't know. We used to have to have full dentition, but they've changed it again. So if you're going to be a teeth counter, they are allowed to have two, up to two missing P1s. So they can have two bottom P1s missing, two top P1s missing, but only two. The molar three, which is this tiny little tooth back here, they don't 
it's irrelevant. If it's gone, if it's there, doesn't matter. Um, but only two P1s are allowed to be missing. This is a good way to check bite. I have a couple of issues with that. I think you've got to just sort of be aware of the dog. Some dogs don't like you putting your hand over their eyes. I tend to look at bite that way if you're going to look at all of the teeth. Sometimes if you're not sure, because Belgian Shepherds are an aloof breed and they can take offence at strangers mauling them. So you might want to ask the owner if they want to show the teeth. That's up to you as a judge. Um, most owners can show you, you know, the teeth. They'll let you know if the dog's going to be a little bit offended by it. Okay, neck and top line. Slightly elongated, well muscled, broadening gradually towards the shoulders. There's that word gradually, moderate, everything is not excessive. Slightly arched, distinct withers, top line straight, broad and muscled and croup, very slight inclination. So I've drawn that red line there to show you that there's no right angles. It, the neck shouldn't come down and meet the wither and then go into a, into a straight top line. It should be, I mean it was a bit hard for me to draw, draw that, you'd think I'd had a few wines, but it's just a gentle arch over the neck, slightly arched, down onto the wither which is slightly prominent and into a straight top line and then a slight inclination in the croup. Angulation, so we have a Tavirin and a German Shepherd. So the bone structure should be solid, they shouldn't be too fine. Strong and muscular, they are a guarding shepherd dog. They've got to be able to do a job. Moderate angulation, so that they have a short, quick gait with moderate reach. We don't want the reach of a German Shepherd in our Belgians, but we do want some reach. Their legs are parallel and perpendicular. So the front legs should be perpendicular to the ground. The hock should be perpendicular to the ground. Paston short and strong, you don't want excessively, uh, excessive angulation in the paston. There's a little bit of angulation there, but nothing excessive. Okay. Same with the underline regarding the gentle curve. So there's nothing excessive about it. It's just a gentle curve from the chest to the under chest and up to the belly. You don't want too much tuck up in the belly, but they do lift up to the, to the belly. Powerful and muscular, square, the point of shoulder to buttocks equals the height at withers. So we measure from the point of shoulder to here and from the wither to the ground. The bitches can be slightly longer, it actually doesn't say that in our standard anymore I don't think, but you know sometimes the bitches are a bit longer and that's okay, they need to, they're the ones that have to have the puppies so we tend to not penalise that. Chest deep and well let down and half height to wither. So if you're measuring where the elbow is to the ground should be equal to where the elbow is to the wither. That's a really important one actually to think of. You've got to get your hands on the dog to find that. Sometimes they can look like they're a bit dumpy in leg if they've got a really long coat and vice versa, sometimes they can look like they're a bit and strong. Actually, here's where we were. Powerful and masculine. Uh, this is where we measure square, the point of the shoulders to the buttocks, equal height to the withers. Short in loin, chest deep and well let down. So the chest should come to the point of elbow. So what I do is I run my hand up their leg to their elbow and I see which I hit first. If I hit the chest first before the elbow, that's good. If I hit the elbow first and I haven't hit the chest, then the chest is not deep enough. Bell, belly moderately developed, neither drooping nor tucked up. So you don't want a really tucked up belly, but you do want it to rise slightly in a harmonious curve up to the belly. Some of these photos aren't the best, but there's a nice grey Tavirin male with good front angulation, lovely and square, nice hind angulation. Uh, the hocks aren't too long, we're getting a lot of long hocks at the moment. Powerful but not heavy and cumbersome. Well let down hock, moderate angulation, 
but balanced. Upper thigh broad and well muscled. Stance perpendicular to the ground again. Okay, so um, when it comes to balance in the Belgian Shepherd, you're much better off with a slightly straighter front that matches a slightly straighter rear. And as judges, you need to have a think about, it's very easy to just go, that dog doesn't move, so it can go at the end of the line, that one moves well. But that one that you just put to the end of the line may not move well because it's very square and it has slider straight front angulation but very well angulated in rear. So the dog may be either crabbing or it may be running wide. The dog that you've put up is moving beautifully because it's slightly longer in loin or longer in body. So it doesn't have to compensate. It may have the same angulation issues as the first dog but it doesn't have to compensate. So if they're both exactly the same in angulation and one is square and one is long, which is the better dog? Square dog. Which is the one that's going to move worse? A square dog. Okay, feet. So they should be cat-like feet with well-arched toes. They can be slightly oval in the rear. It's very hard to get photos of dog's feet because they're all standing in grass, every single dog. So I got an illustration, and then I actually found a couple of Malinois that showed the nice, lovely cat-like feet. So tight feet, arched um, paws and small with maybe slightly longer in the rear. Tail. Um, tail should be lovely and plumed in the Tavurans, like an ear of corn in the Malinois, and obviously a rough coat on the Lacanois. But I've put the Tavurin coat uh, tail here because I couldn't find any of the others. <laughs> um, that's a nice tail. It, it, they can come up a little bit at the bottom. You don't want a hook but they can rise a little bit. You don't want them to go over the top line preferably. But the thing to do is if you've got three males in a ring and they've all got gay tails, there's probably a good reason for that and it's probably got nothing to do with their tail set or anything else. It's just attitude. They know there's another boy there so they're going to try and be bigger and the tail will go up. So you have to check the tail set then and have a look at them on the stand and try and work out whether that tail is actually a product of genetic confirmation or whether it's just attitude. But that is what you should be seeing when the long-coated dogs run around. All of them, but not with that coat, hopefully. Okay, well set on and strong at the base. Medium length and at least to the hock. Preferably longer, but at least to the hock. So run the tail down to the tip, not where the tip of the hair is, where the actual tip of the bone of the tail is, and make sure that it reaches the hock. At rest, carried down, raise more when moving without passing the horizontal, preferably, unless there's another boy around. Cat-like feet and arch, this is around the wrong way, but front feet round and tight, hind feet can be oval. Okay, movement. This is a really big thing with judges. They seem to want us to run our dogs around the ring like they're German Shepherds, and they are not German Shepherds. A Belgian Shepherd should have adequate reach and drive for their angulations. So they're not going to overreach and they're, they're, they're quick movers and they should look. You'll know if a dog's moving well, it's going to look effortless. It'll look like it's floating. If there's too much action anywhere in the movement, then it's incorrect. You don't see either of these two dogs with their paws up anywhere. Usually, and it depends of course at the actual shutter timing of the, of the picture, but usually the front paw should be somewhere in line with the nose. The head should drop and move forward slightly, sort of like a border collie moves, you know how they drop their head, they don't. Some Belgians will run up with their head high, that can be because they've been trained that way or it could be shoulder placement, neck issues. They're always on the move. When you own one you'll know they're never still. The gait is lively, fast and tireless. I actually took springy out of there and maybe that was a bit naughty but it's in our standard that says springy. And I don't think that comes across as what it actually means. You don't want a bouncy Belgian when it's running around the ring unless it's jumping up. Um, it should be lively though and it should have energy in it but it shouldn't be over exaggerated. 
The exuberant temperament should show on the move, so they shouldn't be dragged around the ring with their head down like they don't want to be here. The reach is medium, movement even and easy with good rear drive. So I think somewhere in one of these slides I've done the two triangles, but you can see by both of these dogs that their legs are about the same apart and if you did a triangle in each of them it would be fairly even. The top line remains tight while the front legs are not lifted too high. That's really important. That top line should not, it shouldn't roll and it shouldn't bounce. It should re remain very smooth. There we go. So it doesn't quite fit into that, but it gives you an idea that as you're watching them move, you should get an idea that the re front drive is pretty much the same as the rear drive. That photo taken a split second later, we probably could have placed those feet a bit more perfectly, but. I use that photo a lot. I think that is a beautiful movement shot of a lovely Belgian. Okay, coat texture and length. The hair must always be dense, regardless of whether it's a Malinois, a Grenondale, a Tavirin or a Lacamoire. They need a woolly, woolly undercoat forming an excellent protect, protective covering. Now, they used to say in the standard standoffish, they don't use that anymore, but you don't want a, a flat draped coat because the undercoat is what makes it stand out. So the coat should, even the, the Malinois coat should stand out if it's got correct undercoat. Same for the Lacamoire. The undercoat is what makes the coat dense. All of them have coarse coats. They shouldn't be soft and silky. Okay, so here's three pictures of adult males in coat. So an adult male, no matter what variety, even the Malinois will often develop a rough. So they get thicker around the head as they get older, the, the coat does, and they develop a mane or a ruff. So it's obviously more prominent in the long-coated varieties, but still happens in the Lacanoir and certainly still happens in the Malinois. Okay, black. All varieties may have limited white on the chest and toes. So it's really, you don't want too much white. Having said that, I wouldn't be penalising a dog with a lot of white if it's perfect in every other way. But they can have the tips of their toes can be white, and so long as they don't have a big blaze of white at the front, they can have white on their chest. Standoff coat, never draped. A drapey coat that's flat and long would never withstand the weather that they've been required to work in. Um, you might notice in the standard there's no length requirement in the Tavirans and the Gronendals, and that's really important. The only variety that has a length requirement is the Lacamoire, and that's six centimetres on the body. So even the Malinois, it just says shorter or short-coated. So I have seen some judges penalising Malinois because they think their coat's too long, but then if you say to them, okay, so should we have them as a Tavirin? Oh, no, the coat's too short for a Tavirin. Well, you know. Um, the ears are protected and framed by hair on all of the varieties and the breeches. Now, all of the varieties have plume breeches, but it's obviously more prominent on the Gronendal and the Tavirin and also probably on the Lacanoir over the Malinois, but they still have breeches. As for Gronendal, except for the colour, obviously, uh, one of the most important things, or a couple of the most important things with Tavurin when you're looking at their colour, and this applies to Malamar as well, um, is the mask. So the mask should really run from the eyelid down to the lips. Now, with Belgian Shepherds, depending on what coat drop they're going through, some of them can be black all year, but some of them, when they drop coat, can pale out a little bit, and then the mask comes back. But so long as the eyelids around the eyes are dark and around the lips are dark and there is black in there and it's not lighter than the rest of the coat. If it's lighter than the rest of the dog then that's probably a reverse mask and that's definitely not desired. But if it's just paling out then you have to balance that with the rest of the quality of the dog. Eyes should be, uh, sorry, ears should be dark. So all of them, I mean the Gronendale obviously has dark ears, but the other varieties, no matter what colour they are, the ears are always darker, like the mask. Fawn with red overlay is preferred for the Tavirin. However, grey is acceptable. 
So it's an interesting thing that in the Malinois you cannot have a grey, but in the Tavirin, red is the preferred colour, but grey is, is accepted. Well, it, it pretty much says red is the preferred colour. And it's been a bit of a bone of contention with judges over the years. But the difference is, and our argument's always been, they eliminated grey from the Malinois, they said no grey. In the Tavirin, they said red is preferred, which means that grey is accepted. And if you have a perfect grey specimen and an average red dog, you must put the grey up over the red. If you've got two perfect examples that you think are both equal quality, then you probably should go make that red colour the extra point that takes the red one over the line. Uh, every hair on, even probably on the grannies, is tipped with black, but you don't see, they actually carry the masking gene as well, you just don't see it because the rest of them is black. But the Malinois and the Tavurin carry what we call Chabonage. So it looks like someone's dipped their hand in coal and run it over the top of the coat. So it doesn't go right through to the root, it just is the very tipping of the coat. Now that can be very pale or it can be quite dark. We don't want it that pale that you can't see that there's any Charbonnage. We, that's, a, that's a point of the breed. We want them to have some Charbonnage. We don't want it that dark that they almost look like a Gronendale. So if you look at it and go, whoa, that dog's a bit dark, then it probably is because once again, this breed is a moderate breed. So even their Charbonnage should be in moderation. The black does increase with each coat drop. So if you've got a dog that's got a lot of Charbonnage as a puppy, and I've had one, by the time they get to eight, nine or 10, you actually nearly have a Gronendale almost, or almost a black and tan. Okay, the Malinois, short-coated, colour is for the Tavurin, but must be for no pale or grey permitted. Fuller at the tail, almost like an ear of corn. Forms a collarette or rough around the neck. So really, it's a Tavurin with a short coat, or the Tavurin is a Malinois with a long coat, except for temperament. Lacamoire. So this is the one that you won't have had as much experience with, but hopefully you'll get to see more and more of them. They have a rough, dry coat, tousled, not curly. You don't want a curl that comes around onto itself. If it's curly, it's incorrect. Six centimetres over the body, less on the head and muzzle. Now, six centimetres is not very long. There's a lot of Lacamoire with coats longer than six centimetres, so... Um, yeah, it shouldn't be a long coat, just long enough to see that it's got tossling. It's essential to have furnishings on the muzzle. This is a, a common argument and debate that's had around Europe. But so it doesn't say how much furnishings it should have, and it says less on the head than the body. So it's obviously got to be less than six centimetres. Um, many of us as breeders believe that if the furnishings on the face stop you from seeing the expression of the dog or seeing whether it's got a correct Belgian head then it's probably got a little bit too much furnishings and then you should penalise accordingly. Like it's not the end of the world but that should be taken into consideration. You should be able to look at the dog and go wow that's got a beautiful Belgian Shepherd expression, nice head without actually having to get your hand through it. Um, so yeah, must have furnishings on the muzzle, but there's no real rule as to how many they must be. And the tail should not form a plume like that you saw in the Tavurin, but it should be fuller. Okay, so we won't do pick one good or bad, but I'll just go through these briefly. This, this dog here, gets a lot of attention on the internet. People love it. Pet people love this dog. And he keeps appearing over and over again on internet feeds from people that have got my dogs going, oh my God, look at this dog, he's so beautiful. He is so wrong. He's so majestic as a dog, but he's so wrong as a Belgian Shepherd. So his front legs are forward place to start with. He's way too long in the body. He's way over angulated in rear. 
his, I mean, he's got gog goggles, that's probably not a bad thing. His neck's probably lovely, but it's too upright, which has probably got something to do with his front assembly, I'm not sure. But it doesn't take away from the fact that he, you know, he's eye-catching, but he's not correct for a Belgian Shepherd. This is a fairly young dog here, but I put him up because his depth of chest is obviously, he's not deep enough in the chest, very forward placed and very straight and hind angulation. Um, the other three dogs, any one of them could, could win, they're not too bad. This one here could probably do with more stop. This dog here's got lovely parallels. That dog there's probably got a slightly rounded skull. I mean, all dogs have got faults, but it's just, I think it's so that you can see that if you look at a good Belgian Shepherd, you should be able to see it straight away. You might go up and go over it and find a few faults, but basically from the silhouette, from what you're seeing from a distance, you should be able to go, wow, that's balanced, harmonious. Everything looks like it's where it should be. These are females. So I would probably be placing these dogs maybe one, two, three, four, possibly. I mean, and that's going by photos, but she's obviously got um, not deep enough chest. This one here has no leg, very cobby looking dog, doesn't have elegance. Uh, this is the black and white at the bottom, same thing, probably lacks a little bit of elegance. So here's some typical male expressions in all four varieties. So nice placed ears, almond shaped eyes, um, dark eyes, it, it, it chiseled heads, it's what gives that, you know, it's the expression that you see first that has a lot to do, that's a lot of points towards the overall dog. Female expression, as you can see, you know, a lot sweeter, just a little bit softer, but still all of the same breed traits, small ears, nice shaped eyes, nice and dark, well set ears. So what is a Belgian sheepdog? Well, obviously it's a sheepdog, or is it a duck dog, or is it a cow dog? They're very good herders. You put something in front of them to herd, children, anything, they'll herd them. But they can also be a rescue dog, a guard dog, an assistance dog, and a war dog. We have dogs in Australia doing all of these things. So if you know what the breed is intended for, it gives you a good idea of their temperament and the fact that they should be robust. They're able to do these things. And, and people are happy to ask them to do them. They can also be a clown and a friend. Belgians like nothing better than to make you laugh. The elegant shepherd dog. The end. Okay. So Janine, if you can stack him up when they're ready. So how you approach a Belgian shepherd is really, really important. And it's kind of a little bit of an oxymoron because and you'll see what I mean in a, in a minute. So you don't want to be coming up to a Belgian slowly and cautiously and give him your hand and then give it to him again and then hope that he's okay and then go for him because most Belgians will be going, someone's coming, I should protect mum, are they okay? Gee, they're taking their time. Oh, this is a bit weird. They seem a bit uncertain. Bang, in that amount of time they've gone, I'm not going to have you come near my mum, I'm going to guard her. So you have to be quite confident with them because a dog that's really rock solid can lose its confidence if you're not confident in approaching them. The other thing that you can't do is stand back and stare at them from every angle because if you do this to a Belgian Shepherd, they're going to go, most of them, not Hamlet obviously, but you know, if a dog's got a very high guarding instinct and maybe it's not quite as well trained, it's going to start looking at you going, what the hell are you doing? So the best thing to do is come up and say, how old is your dog? He's six. Six. Hello. Touch the dog straight away on the head, let him know that you're a friend and then look at his teeth, 
both sides, good dog, and then start, but never take your hands off him. So always keep a hand on the dog at all times. So if you want to go for the testicles, one hand's there, he knows where you are, good boy, yes, and then move away from him. Try and stay with the dog, let him know where you are. I've had people come up, they've touched the dog, hello, good boy, then they've come back here, and then they've gone back here, and then they've come up and gone bang. I'll try the testicles. That often doesn't go over too well. No. So confident, um, and the best thing is to confidently walk up to the owner first. How old's your dog? Six and a half. Excellent. Well done. Good boy. There you go. Straight into it. And the dog will usually go, well, you've already spoken to mum. She's accepted you. It's all cool. Remembering that if you've got a novice handler and they're a bit worried about themselves in the ring, that's going to go down to a Belgian Shepherd is so sensitive to their owners and their handlers. So they're going to go, mum's worried about something. What is she worried about? Ah, here comes a stranger. And they're approaching me a little bit different to every other stranger because most other strangers come up and say, hey Janine, how you going? Hey, hey me, how you doing bud? And that's it. They don't go past his ears. They don't want to check out his back bits. So, you know, if you're not confident and if you don't act like you're a friend and speak to the handler first, the dog could be already getting worked up if the handler is anxious. So just keep all of those things in mind. They're not a Labrador. They're very hypersensitive to their owners. They're hypersensitive to their environment. They're a guard dog. So all of these things together, and they have an aloofness in their breed that we have to overcome when we train them as puppies. That's why you'll sometimes see some in the ring that go, yeah, no, you, 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 and you, no one's touching me. That's because they haven't been socialised probably adequately enough as a puppy to get them over that initial stranger danger thing. So, but yeah, uh, this is a great dog because he's been really well trained and rock solid, but they're not all, they, you know, some of them are going to look like this and then when you come up they're going to, but if they, you know, that's, that's okay too, they're aloof. They're not going to love you, but so long as they stand there and stay and let you handle them, they'll be fine. Good boy. Okay. Okay, so here we have an adult male Gronendale. Movement should be fluent. Top line should remain level. Should be no excessiveness in the movement at all. The legs can converge a little bit when the dog picks up speed. And stand. Okay, this is an adult male Gronendale on the move. Shows alertness, active, good top line, nice reach and drive, uh, no choppiness, which is what you want. You want the dog to be lively and alert. The legs can converge towards the center at speed. When watching Belgian Shepherd movement, the legs can converge to the center at speed. The faster they go, the closer they will come to the center line. Okay, Belgian Shepherd Lacanoir adult female on the move. Nice reach, top line remaining level. You want the front and rear reach and drive to be balanced and similar. Legs can converge to the centre line on the move. Good girl. Okay, Belgian Shepherd Lacanoir. You want the top line to remain level. You want balanced reach and drive. Nice front reach. Okay, adult Malinois male. 
maintaining top line on the move. Move slightly high in front movement. Nice coming and going movement. Adult male Malinois, 10 year old, good movement, level top line on the move, slightly high action in the front, nice rear drive. Young Tavirin female, nice steady top line, nice balance movement, adequate reach and drive. Doesn't cross over in rear, nice rear movement, nice coming. Converges slightly, which is acceptable. Nice rear movement going out, no crossing over. Converges slightly, coming back, which is acceptable. <laughs>